You good? All right. Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, we're going to resume uh, the normal business portion of our meeting. Uh, we had held off as a pledge of allegiance, so everyone please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. so it gets captured on there. So every year at this time, we like to just highlight what our kids are doing four years later. Where are they going their senior year, after their senior year? We put up a, a presentation pretty much of the colleges they're accepted to. The last time, when I just did it this recent time, I said to myself, I know there's a few kids going to the military. Let's reach out to the school and see if we can get them to come down. Just to, just to honor them and, and congratulate them on their success and, and their choice for, for their future careers. And, and all the board members felt like that was a good idea. So that's why we reached out to the school. They were very helpful and got everybody's name. And we were able to send you an invitation. It, this is not a real big formal kind of thing. We just wanted to say, you know, congratulations and thank you, basically. And um, all the board members, I think, feel the same way. And, and we're all excited that you guys came out to, to be acknowledged for what you're going to do for our country. So um, we'll just call you up. Maybe you can just say your name and um, which uh, branch of the military you're going to. So we'll start. Right, just come up, Zach. Zach can come up first. That's good. If you don't mind, just say full name and where you're, which branch you're going to. I'm uh, Zach Lefferts. I'm going to the Air Force. Great. And this is just a little thank you from us, a little card. Devlin Trotsky, and I'm joining the Marine Corps. Nice. Christian. I'm Christian Anderson, and I'm joining the Air Force. Nice. We were, we were excited because we just got some new stationery. And we were able to use it for the first time. And, uh, we wrote you a little note, and the board members all signed it. We just wanted to let you know we're thinking about you, and we're very proud of you. And uh, we just think it's amazing what you're doing. And uh, we just felt like it was very important, not just to talk about all the kids that are going to the Ivy League schools and all those other things, but everybody, to make sure that we, uh, that we included everybody. Um, president of the board, Dino Capello, too. I think Steve said it all, but again, thank you very much. And, and maybe we can get a picture. Yeah, that would be great. Right. You don't mind with picture. You have an opportunity to talk. I always like to say a few words. Uh, I'm one of two veterans on board, Army, and, and Mike Anderson served in the U.S. Navy. So uh, this is great that we have uh, the opportunity to uh, recognize young men going into the service to serve, serve our country. And if I look back historically on uh, <laughs> my checkered career and a lot of different things, I, I probably uh, would have been better off if I went into the service first before I went to college. Okay, and you'll get some uh, GI benefits too when you, when you get out. So again, thanks for serving, and I wish you the best of luck. Will you take a picture? Will you take a picture with uh, if the board members want to come up too, and the parents? Any parents want to come up? We have we have two veterans. It's all about them. Sure. 
and their teachers are informing them tomorrow just so that they know what books to read for their summer reading. And we typically don't put out our seventh and eighth grade schedules until August, but I think it'll be a little earlier this year that we don't have those yet. Um, the other item I have was my goal number three, which is quantitative, and Mr. Forte sent that out over the weekend. And just to give you the data, because we had finalized the data on Friday, and the goal was really to look at all of the students in grades one through five and try to get them to that benchmark. So we raised the benchmark uh, a little bit and then uh, changed our assessments with our new math program. And we were trying to get every student to the 80% the proficiency mark. Those students that had a large distance from the proficiency mark, I marked how many percentages, how many percentage points they would need to to make, and we tried to close that gap. So there were students that scored at the beginning of the year were really below even 10%. And to go from, you know, like 5% on an assessment to 80 is a huge growth. Um, but then what the goal was that they would have to close that gap by 50% or more. We had some that barely made that 50%, but then we had others that were like, went from 5% all the way up to like 75. I mean, they went they were really close to proficiency, but didn't quite make it. Um, I do have all of that data where I went through every student and identified how much gap they had and what the percentage they would need and what they actually did. I did find, interestingly, doing that, I found two grade levels where the students still had gaps and I'd be able to use that data with our math coach next year to say, look at these two grades because they're entering this, this grade level. These students are entering with this gap already and we need to work hit those students in September to try to catch them up right at the beginning. But this is the data, so a significant number of the students met the benchmark, but then the second one is how many, excuse me, how many students actually needed to close the gap, and then the total number of students tested. The number of students tested doesn't necessarily match the number of students we had enrolled, because they had to be here in September and June. So we had some students that were here at the beginning of the year and moved, and then some students came at the end of the year, so their data was not, did not count in this or if for whatever reason they didn't take, well that was really the only reason they didn't take the assessment, where they weren't here those two at the, for the entire year. We also did not include students that had a totally different curriculum, so if they were in a self-contained environment and they were not following the grade level uh, curriculum per their IEP, because they weren't taking these assessments. So it doesn't totally match up with the numbers of students in the grade, but those are the numbers of students whose data that we, that we looked at. So in doing this, it was interesting to see how well they uh, did over the year, but I was even more interested to see where to really pinpoint where those gaps are so that I know in September, I already know which students I need to hit. So it's exciting stuff. This concludes Assistant Superintendent's report. Thank you. All right, this time, uh, Mike, this is administrator's comments. I almost forgot. No comment. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, 745, we'll open up for public comment. Any, uh, anything germane to the district, questions, comments, please come up and sign in and we'll announce your name and address for the record. Thank you. If not, if not, uh, Shesh, I'm going to say one thing. Thank you for all these years coming to our meetings. I know your daughter just graduated. Congratulations. Uh, uh, I was there, fortunate enough to see her speech uh, Friday night. She did a fantastic job. So again, thank you for coming. Hopefully we'll see you here occasionally once in a while. You're welcome anytime you'd like to come. So, thank you. Yes, thank you, Mitch. Thank you. 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 All right, if nothing else, uh, I'll close the public comment at 7.46 p.m. And we'll move on to the rest of the agenda. Mr. Anderson, would you care to take us through all of business Sure. Um, I'd like to move items 1, 2, and 3 as a block, including uh, uh, regular monthly May reports, uh, education reports, as well as minutes from our uh, May 8th and May 22nd meetings. I'll second. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I have a comment on the minutes. And i sorry I didn't send it sooner. But um, must admit I didn't notice it sooner. Um, on the May 22nd minutes, um, Mr. Luer and I 
voted no on motion number three. But, but um, when the minutes were typed up, when we voted on it that night, there was a strike through on motion number two, um, which was the field trip list because there were no field trips on May 22nd. Um, so we ended up voting no in according to the minutes on a motion that we actually voted yes on because motion three became motion two, but it stayed in the minutes that we voted no on motion three. So um, to fix the minutes, I'd like to ask for an amendment, and I'll hand you this um, to at the end of the meeting, that for motion four in instruction and program, um, that our, I guess we should say our vote was no on number two. But I guess for the future, if we do a strike through, maybe it should stay. You'll see what I mean when I bring it over. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'll bring it over. Marianne, what, May 8th or May 22nd? May 22nd. There was a strike through on this, and Dave and I voted really against the weeding log. But in the minutes, motion number three becomes the Summer Literacy Institute, not the weeding log, because they didn't put that in. So, we voted three against. Right. I don't know so, how to fix it. Okay. I don't know how you want to fix it. So, in the future, do you keep this in so that when we voted no on the three, it stays number three? So now we have to vote no on three, which is really executive punching the schools, which we voted for. So, I don't know how you want to fix it. Well, maybe Mike was saying, maybe we just want to lose the time. Okay, just the May 22nd regular session And I, I apologize because I know we've had them for a while and I must admit to being behind on my reading. So you're gonna we're gonna have it. So uh, yeah, I'd like to uh, Don, if you're okay with it, I'm gonna propose removing under C approval of the work session. I'm oh, sorry, regular session and executive session May 22nd. That's fine. Okay. Alright, um, everybody else okay? Alright, roll call please. Mr. Anderson? Uh, yes, I need to abstain on B3. I was not at the uh, executive session last meeting, so I don't have the information on those HIV reports. And then uh, I need to abstain on C. Executive session May 8th, as I showed up late for that meeting, was not there for the entire executive session. But yes to everything else. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mrs. Delona? Yes. Mrs. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Just to make sure I understand what I'm voting on, we push the minutes for the 22nd yes, to, the, to the next to the next meeting, but we are keeping the eighth in the meeting, in this approval. Correct. Okay, then yes. Mrs. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Okay. All right, moving on to new business. If there are no objections, I would like to move under personnel item one. Move all the way. All the way down to uh, number 13. I'll second. Mr. Class. And 
obviously there's a forte on this agenda. Yeah, just you got to do our internship. It was actually two. Oh, was there? My cousin has a kid in Lakeview who's going to be. Oh, I saw, I saw yeah. that in Forte, but I yeah. assumed it was a point. It was close yeah, to that. it is. It's like my third cousin. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I had a question on, on number 11 the, uh, the peer mentor volunteers. Um, these kids will kind of be in and out on that, or are they all going to be there? No, yeah, they're not going to all be there. Yeah, it's kind time. of like a rotation yeah. type of thing. They, they, plus, they go on vacations. And yeah, it's okay. Not, it's not really covered the whole way. Question on, uh, I believe this is one. Uh, you have one YY. Yeah, it's the second to last one. Uh, just, it's kindergarten, it's a, it's a bus driver for a kindergarten run, 17 18 school year. What, is that, that's an addition to, what, what is that? This person has been doing a garage duty, so instead of the garage duty, they're doing a kindergarten line. So it's basically the switching okay. jobs. It's old language, too. Eventually, it'll be called pre kindergarten once the contract is signed. Uh, that's what I was confused about, because the kindergarten is going the same bus as the first. <laughs> yes. That's why I was confused. I was like, I didn't think there was a kindergarten run. Right. Right. No. Got it. <laughs> once, the, once the language changes, they're in effect, it'll be called pre kindergarten So that's an addition to the normal run? Or is that different? Yes, he does AM, PM, and that's in addition to his normal one. Got it. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I just want to say congratulations to you and uh, Sandy on the Americas completing that class. Oh, as always, great, much appreciated. Thank you. Very nice work. Yeah. All right. Roll call. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mrs. Tillerman? Yes. Mrs. Lindsay? Uh, yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes, abstain eight. Mrs. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. All right, uh, instruction and programming. Now, Mr. Lord, you move Mr. Reese? I would like to move the, I would like to move item one under instruction and programming, which is workshops with expenses for five teachers, for five uh, of our employees. Counselor, two teachers, and a couple of nurses for the various things as listed in the uh, agenda. I'll second. Everybody okay? Yeah, Dr. Collins, what? I M S E. I'm not sure what the actual letters stand for, but it is, uh, it's an Orton Gillingham, but okay. it's like a, a summer concentrated program uh, because Ms. Feltzer is going to be returning as a part-time, and now in her role, she's going to need some background in that. Got it. Thank you. Apparently, the Institute for Multisensory oh, Education. Yeah. There we go. I could probably, if I thought about it, I probably might be able to figure out those, what those letters were. But I know it's Orton it's or Gilligan. Yes, I was more interested in what it was about. <laughs> Thank wow. you. Yeah, okay. sure. <laughs> it, it also kind of stuck out because of the cost, but I guess it makes yeah. sense. Those Orton Gilligan trainings are pretty expensive. Yes, yes. Mr. Anderson? 
Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mrs. Deluna? Yes. Mrs. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Mrs. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. All right. Uh, policy and revisions. Um, Mrs. Wagner, would you care to move us through our policy uh, items today? Sure. So on your agenda under C, um, I move to approve the following policies. Uh, there's the list of them. Can I just say the list of them? Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. I'll second. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mrs. DeLuna? Yes. Mrs. Lansing? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Uh, yes, abstain on 0167. Mrs. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. All right, finance. Mrs. DeLuna? Can you want us to finance tonight? Um, if there's no objection, I'd like to move under letter D, finance on your agenda, a block items um, are listed as numbers 1 through 23. Um, to summarize, these, uh, there's checklists, there's language about putting a cap for our cap reserve, a maintenance reserve, the transfer at the end of the year. Um, Donations for the play, the Educational Services Commission, and the, the sale of equipment, and the balance of the list are um, special ed program services through IEPs. And, oh, and there's an item 24. I'm sorry, I missed that one. Auto Health Solutions. I'll second. Thank you. The uh, number 17, the sale of equipment, Walker activity chair. I, I think we covered this last time, but I, I can't remember. What, why is this, why are we selling this? Is the, the student has, we have a child who uses it to custom chair, and he's in eighth grade, so when he goes to ninth grade, he can't use it anymore. And Morris Knowles about to buy a new one, so instead of doing that, we, we're selling the Mars. Thank you. I know uh, Mrs. Galuna mentioned it, but um, thank you again to the uh, Balvino Boyle family. Uh, I know they supported the play in donations and a lot of support. Um, throughout the last few years, so uh, thank you for their generous uh, donation to the schools for the uh, play. And also the Booster Club too, sorry, I didn't mean to leave them off the list of thank yous. They uh, donated a tremendous amount of money obviously this year towards uh, the play. Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mrs. DeLore? Yes. Mrs. Lindsay? Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on motion number one, I would like to abstain on check number 2889. And then I, I'm not sure, but um, I will abstain on motions eight and nine. Eight and nine? Correct. And yes on everything else. Abstain check number 2889, abstain on motion 889. Correct, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lord? I'm going to abstain on motion one, yes for everything else. 
Mrs. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Capella? Yes. All right. Okay, Don, uh, Mr. Cass, take the Minister of Transportation. I have two items to move under transportation. Item number one is to approve First Hope Bank as the lowest bidder for leasing a new bus for the district in the amount of $93,375 for the 2017-2018 school year. Item number two is for board approval of the school bus emergency evacuation drill reports at Lakeview School, Riverview School, and Valley View School. And this is a five-year lease. It's not ninety-three. Five it's a five-year lease uh, term for the bus. Not ninety-three thousand for one year. And just to clarify for the public as well as anybody who's watching the video, we use the term lease, but that's not your traditional car lease, meaning that we don't give that bus back at the end. It's really just a way for us to finance it over five years, correct? Correct. And just to also add on to that, sorry, I'm going to keep going, but we've gotten in a rotation now of a bus or two each year instead of a bolus of five buses at a time where we have some coming off lease, some coming on. Um, that way it's a, it's a rotate in, rotate out, correct? That's correct. Sorry, we did start with the special from last meeting. There is a little bit of a problem coming up. We do have some buses. Yeah. Even, so we will have to buy, continue to buy buses as we so we don't get stuck with six in one year. Yeah. If you saw, I don't, I'm not sure everybody got to it, but there was a, I gave you a list of buses and their anticipated replacement date, as well as the amortization schedule on this lease, just so everybody can have an idea. And um, there will be some time, actually we're trying to be prudent now, build up to it so that we don't get, because six buses, you're talking about like, you know, over half a million dollars, and our 2% increase is about half a million dollars, so that would be all buses. So we're trying to just start picking away at that now so that we have, don't have a big uh, problem in a few years. And also trying to get on that cycle. Yeah. And I think we, we talked about this the last few years with the budget. We talked about potentially moving some up to keep that rotation of one or two as opposed to five or six. Yeah, yeah. Correct. And it will be a time that we might have to uh, at least purchase, uh, at least two, just to yep. uh, get closer to that point. I got a question about the list of buses that uh, was sent out. By the way, thank you for doing that. That made it much, much clearer to my mind. It's, uh, there's a minivan on here, uh, bus number C1, that apparently is going to expire after 12 years. Is that, is there, are there different rules for, are there different rules for uh, like vehicles not originally designed as buses? The law has changed. It used to be 10 to 12 years, now it's 15 years expiration. Um, I'm not sure. Let me see which one you're talking about. It's, it's the second one. It's the second one on the list that was sent out. I, it, it, split, it stuck out of me because it's the only one that isn't on a 15 year cycle and it confused me. Well, E13 is, is on a 14 year cycle. I'll get back to you on, on the um, expiration. There's different period. rules for different equipment. Okay. It's not. They're not all exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got big mini minivan. Okay, I, I was wondering what that was. Um, the next, unless I'm reading this wrong, this coming year we aren't scheduled to have any buses expire, and then we're going to have three a year for the next couple of years, and five in 2021. That's the bubble you're talking about, correct? That is correct. So our, so next year we're planning on beginning to do something about that. That that I this is I'm, I realize that this year's budget is is done. We're not we're not talking about that anymore. I just want to make sure that we keep this in mind because, like you said, half a million dollars for five buses is going to be rough. So thank you. Well, and I guess for Mike's. I point of information, and I think Dino sort of mentioned it to you, we had a rather lengthy discussion about this um, and whether or not we should look to maybe outright purchase some buses so that 
this five-year lease purchase and next year's five-year lease purchase falls on top of the bubble year's purchases, and then you really have, you're buying buses, and maybe in a year when you don't have to buy that many, to outright purchase it so you don't, which was what generated Steve making this wonderful chart for us, so we could understand better what we were coming up against. Yeah, like next year, since we aren't scheduled to buy any, since we don't have to buy any according to this, outright buy one, don't lease it, just plug down the 96, that 93,000 or whatever it is to, and so we have one less that we have to amortize over the following five years. And I think Steve also sent us, it's about a little under $5,000 we're going to pay. It's about 900 a year. Yeah. Yeah, so. so like 4,500 of that. We've argued over this one. <laughs> so this is, is this because we started leasing buses? In other words, at one point we weren't leasing buses, obviously. This idea was probably not around 15 years ago, I'm guessing, to lease buses. It probably is something that the board started, I'm guessing. Nope. When I was in the audience, like Mahesh, before I was on the board, and I've been on board for 15 years, they were lease purchasing buses. Because I remember sitting in there and we give back to them and asking those questions. So there was just years where bus, bus leasing was, was skipped, bus purchases. Was skipped. Right, because, because the state came out. They extended the, the years. They extended it to five years. years, so instead of keeping it in the budget, it was pulled out. Yeah. So now we have to put it back. So we had that gap. Yeah. yeah, when they extended the time you could keep a bus, it gave everybody a breather to do other things. Everybody said, and that was it. Okay, got it. Yeah. Which is still ridiculous that they have a time limit because the bus technically could have 20,000 miles on it and 15 years old and you can't use it anymore. So then we sell it to somebody else and use it for a year and a We get very little money for our used buses. I know, but my son just went to a tiny home event on oh, Saturday. Is that? Somebody um, is uh, repurposing uh, gold buses. Uh, it's a tiny sandwich. home. Oh, it's like a sandwich. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, all right. Oh, it's <laughs> that's if you can sell it. Yeah. Okay. Um, are we, mm -hmm. We're voting on transportation, and then we'll move on to groceries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just want to that way, so we'll vote that. Okay. So roll call, please, on transportation. On one and two. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mrs. Simona? Yes. Mrs. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Boer? Yes. Mrs. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Cass, building some grounds, if you don't mind. Yeah, moving on to building grounds. I have uh, five items to, to move. Um, number one is to approve the shared services agreement with the township of Denville to provide a class three special officer for security in the district. Item number two is uh, to rescind motions E, three, and four under building and grounds at our July 18th meeting because we didn't. Uh, reference uh, capital reserve funds, which is where the funding is going to come from. So uh, we resend those two motions. And then number three on the agenda is to uh, reapprove those two motions with the addition of utilizing capital reserve funds in the language. Number four is to improve a contract with HPC services for the automatic temperature control maintenance and services agreement for two years in the amount of $20,160 for fiscal years 2017-18 and 2018-2019. And number five is to approve the use of Riverview School for an emergency drill by the Denville Fire Department on July 18th after school hours. I'll second.
transportation Thank you. The uh, number three, sorry, two and three, we've already, these are the ones that we already, okay, we sorry, I just, answered, I just answered my own question. Yeah. Sorry, do you remember from our last, the last meeting? Yep. yep. My apologies. How long ago? Anything else? Okay. If not, they were um, well called, please, on buildings and grounds, one through five. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Gass? Yes. Mrs. DeLuna? Yes. Mrs. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Mrs. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Okay. Moving well, on to go to the cause. Uh, thank you all for uh, all the, uh, the flurry of committee reports this afternoon. Much appreciated. Anybody have anything to add? I keep forgetting to mention that I went to um, the Municipal Alliance Council meeting a while ago now. <laughs> and um, they're going to be re-meeting in July and they said that they would be asking the school, as they do every year, for um, input on what they like to see. I attended the uh, Town's Green Sustainability Committee as the Board of uh, Liaison. They have set the um, Green Fair. It's going to be in conjunction again with the uh, Farmer's Market in September. I'm just trying to pull up the date. I think I want to say September 22nd, but it's on Friday, so it's over like that. Um, 24th, September 24th is going to be the uh, Town's Green Fair. Um, they've asked for uh, participation from the uh, school's green teams. They'd like to have a few tables set up to talk about all the things that are going on in the town and obviously uh, what each of the schools is doing. And they're more than welcome to participate and showcase some of the things our students have been doing and some of the stuff we've seen in the uh, last couple of meetings. So I'm sure there'll be, there'll be an invitation uh, for it coming from them soon. As the uh, foundation of Denville liaison, I attended their meeting recently. Um, two things to report. Uh, first of all, their golf outing, their main fundraiser uh, for the year is Monday, September 25th. You're all invited to golf and or attend the evening dinner and uh, tricky tray. Um, they also uh, have had a uh, Flurry of new members joined the foundation, so I believe their board is up to about 12 or 13 members, uh, with uh, several new uh, people who have children in the schools um, there. Um, I'll reserve uh, letting you know who they are until they've um, confirmed that they're definitely on board and <laughs> signed their name on the dotted line, so to say. Um, but uh, fair to say, um, uh, people from both sides of town, different schools, uh, uh, well, a lot with uh, young children. So really exciting time for foundation as they uh, kind of get a new group of uh, people in there and get started. So um, so Monday, September 25th, though, for the uh, golf outing. And then as the um, town council liaison, um, I don't know if Mr. Forte was going to mention it later, but um, we have a meeting tomorrow with uh, Dino and myself and Mr. Forte are meeting with the uh, town Administrator, Mr. Ward, as well as uh, Mayor Andes, to discuss the uh, Ross Haber report and uh, just discuss some uh, housing in town and what it looks like for the impact on the district. So um, we have that meeting tomorrow evening with them. So that was it. This concludes the um, my liaison reports. I was fortunate enough to attend uh, Riverview's uh, award ceremony this morning. Uh, there was uh, several individual awards for uh, kids who performed extremely well academically, and uh, the various clubs and activities were also recognized, among which was the uh, Green Team.
Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I went to Lakeview's PTA meeting as their liaison, which I guess was bittersweet as they transitioned um, the two co-presidents, I think they are, um, both had fifth graders graduating, so onto a new team, trying to transition as much knowledge as possible. So it was a, they had a very successful year, and I'm glad to see that they have a new board in place. We're already using some shit right there. Yeah, I was able. I was fortunate enough to attend that meeting as well. Uh, there, the Amy Florio has has aged out, if you will, of uh, of Riverview, and uh, there's a new board there as well. All of whom have some kind of experience, so there should be hopefully no drop off in performance there. Just to clarify, Amy's children have aged. Sorry, out, not yeah. Amy. Yeah, yeah so. she's out. I have to say, when we go to do our board self-evaluation over the summer, we should, you know, remember. That's a lot of reports. That's a lot. I think we're living up to our goal for ourselves. I'd like to thank all of the, especially the Valley View PTA, for the financial support for the Battle of the Books. So it concluded on Thursday, and the seventh grade team was the champion. So it was exciting that in the end, we're going to move it up a little bit early, uh, earlier in the year next year. But we had... 13 teams down to the end in the final bracket tournament, and the seventh grade team was the champion. So they got their awards, but the Valley View PTA uh, provided the pizza, uh, they provided trophies for all of the kids and ribbons, and also the gift cards to Barnes and Noble for the, the first place winners from each grade level. So it was a lot. So thank you. What's the value? Uh, there's a list of books that are put out, uh, and some of the summer reading this year is one of the titles off the books, uh, book list, and there'll be 15 titles, and the students compete in teams of four or five in the middle schools, so sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. They compete in a tournament style, or a bracket tournament style what competition. The most, there, no, there are, it's like trivia questions. Oh, so you've got 15 okay. books, and then you compete as a team, and you have to answer questions about those books. And every answer is an author or title of the book. Good start. But we're, next year we're not going to, we're going to use the New Jersey librarian's book list and questions. Same format, but there's a lot of different types as we learn about Battle of the Books, but we're going to use the New Jersey librarian's list. But we're going to put that up this summer so we can get started reading this summer if they want to. And eighth grade graduation was Friday, very nice event, not too hot. I think what he accomplished it in about 30 minutes. Yeah. It's a nice look at that. And we had a lot of work, we had a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It's six of them. Yeah. yeah. It was 28 minutes. Yeah, maybe eight <laughs> more. <laughs> so that's always fun. It was a great, it was a great night. Uh, kids were super excited. And so good was, I should have, yeah, exactly. Very, very, very good speeches. Um, anything else? <coughs> Public comments at 8:21 p.m. I won't go through the rest. <laughs> the uh, yellow. Uh, the the handout one. Push, push the button. Yeah, you'll, see a, you'll see a green line on the side. I just wanted to say thank you to the board and I think more people turn up for the meeting. Uh, over the years, the good thing has been like the presentation we had today. You know, it's great to, to recognize the kids of women armed forces. Last week we had the, uh, the green team give the presentation, so I do hope you continue with those kind of things. It's not just a meeting where we're just discussing policy and other things, those are very nice. I just hope you will turn up for that. So. But keep, keep doing that. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. that. Thank you. Always. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> good, good luck up at the high school. All right. Mic drop. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Oh, yes.
substandard space, or is that the um, That was going to be kind of in the, uh, anybody would have anything else to say. But if there's something you'd like to raise, I'm more than happy to circle back to it. No, I just, we've got this pretty, we've got this pretty handout, and it's on the, on the agenda, so I figured there was going to be some kind of discussion about it. I was hoping to hear what you guys had to say. What is, maybe since you haven't quite moved us into executive session, um, I read everything that was sent and the proposals and how are we going to, what's the next step, I guess, is to make the decision and how we're moving forward. I mean, they gave us six proposals. Right. I don't know how I feel. Well, I guess it's time to talk about it. I guess. I mean, I honestly... I mean, when do you need a decision? I mean... Well, first of all, did everybody, did everybody have a chance to chance that? If everybody didn't have a chance, let's hold off and you don't know, need a I decision. Like without this in my hand, yeah, that's what I was saying before. Yeah. That's fine. It's a little too much on the computer, and I did read it, but to yeah. get really get a full grasp on it, I want to have this in my hands. And I'm happy to, and as long as we're not, you know, well, I think we have enough time. My plan was to give you the, the scanned version, but I did write that you have a hard copy, so that we can, you know, it's hard to digest it from the scanned version. I agree. So why don't we, why don't we take, we have until June 10th, I mean, July 10th. On July 10th. I said June 10th. That's either a long time or no. On July 10th, we'll talk more about it in depth. Okay. Uh, but at that time, everybody can get a good chance to digest it, look at it, and come up with some ideas. Um, we will need to make a decision within the next three or four months at the, at the, at the latest. Okay. And so we can discuss at the next meeting what our process is. Okay. Actually, yeah, our time frame is September. That's, that's the decision time. And, and see, just to clarify and ensure I'm on the same page. So we got the Ross Haber report that talked about here are the four more proposed uh, uh, or potential housing that could be built in the, in the town in the near future um, or in the 10 year plan, I guess that was. Um, and then you took that and determined based upon that, how much space will we need to accommodate all of that? If that happens, is that correct? Yes and no. The reason why I know is because the the, the building is really um, kind of a moving target. Whether or not it happens, when is it going to happen? So the answer, the yes side of my answer is the the plan, the plans that we have in here in front of you that you're going to get a chance to review would would accommodate all that we currently have. And they give us some room for growth. Maybe not necessarily. If all the building projects, or even a lot of building projects, came through, we would have enough. But at least it would it would give us some time. It would give us some time, and we'd have some room for expansion. It wouldn't necessarily be enough to say, if, just say there was another, like the developers we have plus another one. Not necessarily, depending on the size of that. Because I got an email today from Steve saying there's another one now on top of the one that we already talked about. In the that are interveners, so it was really a moving target. I think I think basically the, the plans that we have here would just to recap would handle everything we have now, get rid of all substandard space, give us room for our special services department, no more trailers, all that stuff, and then give us some room for growth, maybe like three three additional classrooms that could be used for things during like before the growth comes, but it would give us some room to, like in other words, you can move them out, it's not a big deal. For example, OT and speech right now share a room and it's not a problem at all. Maybe they would get their own room and then if, the, if we needed it because of building, we could move them back. So I guess my question is then, why did we do the Ross Haber report? Because if we're not taking that and saying we're gonna build to accommodate that, then I don't know why we did it. Well, I think we needed it. I think we needed to, to address it. I mean. It, if, if what you're saying is to make sure we have enough space to accommodate all the building that's possibly in there that may not happen, then, then we need to talk about that. I, I'm to talk my to belief looking into this and spending a lot of time looking at this is that every single one of those developments in that plan will happen. 
that's my, based upon going to meetings, based upon everything I've read, talk to people, the town has given that to the courts as, here's our plan. Right. There has been no plan, never has a town presented a plan to the courts, and the courts have said, nah, you don't have to do that many. They've said plenty of times you have to do more, but they've never said you have to do less. So based upon all that, and based upon the town has gone and asked for a declaratory judgment saying, this is what we propose. I really don't doubt, think that the judge is going to say, you don't have to do all that many. Um, so if, if we're not, if, if these don't accommodate everything in that plan, I'm going to have a hard time supporting building anything because we're going to be in the same spot four or five years from now going, all right, where are we going to build now? Well, let's see what happens. Or at least, or at least with the architect saying, okay, here's the plan to accommodate all of that. If I do this, this is like phase one, and then I can add on. Kind of like we discussed how they put that addition on Riverview, and you can't put a second floor on it. Let's not do that. Let's not get to a point of sure. being not ready for what's the next step. Because next step, if we all think there's going to be no next step, that's not going to happen. So I, 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 I'd like to understand. Sure. Yeah. But one of the things I know for a fact now is that that, that stuff is changing every day. I got an email today saying that their expert is saying, Rather than being like in the 150 to to uh, what was it a thousand range now they're looking at more like six uh, 64. So it hit, their experts are saying a lot lower now. So I think one of the things we need to do is get this meeting tomorrow off the ground. See see where are they at that particular time and, and go from there. Yeah. Unfortunately, the town's expert has never won a case against affordable housing. So it's, 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 it's he may be known as the state expert, but unfortunately, he's lost both cases that he's gone into. Or, or negotiated one that was higher than the town's expectations, and the other one they just straight up lost. Um, you so probably, right. I'm sure. I'm sure somewhere in there, there's a, there's a number. But Mike, I think what you're saying is, is interesting, and uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. So even if we did decide to do some type of construction, build an addition, have a, have an addition that could be expanded. Yeah. Meaning, like you go out, you do it. Say, say, just say, I'm just giving you a number. Say we do eight classrooms, but you know, eight classrooms is good for the next seven years but maybe we're going to need 12 you know so then you have the, the ability to add four more without like what you said having to come up with a whole new structure because it's not you know structurally sound though to add that i think that makes a lot of sense yeah. right but that's not here because i think they were pretty clear in the document that what they were proposing wasn't about the possibility of the future correct I, 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 just, I just don't understand. I don't know. We, we have to do the meeting tomorrow, but I don't understand. The, the town is going to have their hands tied to a lawsuit. There's only so much they can say. Mm -hmm. But yeah. based upon the knowledge I have, the town has given the court a plan. Why does the town think that that won't go through? And by the way, that plan is a lot less than what the interveners, some of which are in that plan, have proposed. So the intervener proposed 300. The town came back and said, we decided 60 is an appropriate use of that space. Um, so I, I it, it is that balance, too, of what the state will allow, because they'll say, well, that means that so many classrooms will be empty. So right. we can't, we can't, like, like right. we're saying, we have a little room here. We can say, we'll put someone in there. It's hard because you have to say, well, what we predict, and they won't let you build. But we've got a demographic report, and we've got a report from the town saying this is the 10-year plan. So well, because we can only go out five years. But that 10-year plan is three years old now. By the time we start building, we're going to be five years out. Yeah. Or close to it. You know? I mean, we're going to be at that point. So yeah. They think it's what? It's 2015, right? 2025. 2015 to 2025, I guess. I think so, yeah. 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 And they've already finished one of them, and they have a second one out of five already in the approval process right now. So, so in the interim, since this happened, and it's not that long, right? Three additional uh, uh, building projects have been brought through the town. One of them has zero kids because of the formula, one bedroom. You just know there's nothing for that. But then there are other. There are other possible developments that are being proposed like right now. So. Yeah, but I mean, that, that, that would be in the, for the town, that would be in the 2025, 20, 20, you know, 35 kind of plan. Because the town is saying this, it, there's no doubt that this is going to be in 10 year blocks. And that's what the town is proposing and gone to the state and said, or the courts and said, 
this is our 10-year plan. Does this, account, does this meet our requirement for this 10-year block? Then they would go to the next 10-year block. I think builders are going to have a hard time getting into that 10-year block unless we're getting through it first. Right. Unless the court comes back and says, no, that's not enough, then it's going to open the door for other builders to say, great, let me throw my uh, <laughs> building on, my unit you know, on top of that. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is, is we know one bedrooms don't come out with nothing. Now, granted, clearly off that Ross Aver report, the three bedrooms are much bigger as far as the impact on the schools than the one and two bedrooms. Um, but we know that Esalen Lake, the one bedroom on a railroad track, has some kids coming out of it. Um, not a huge impact, but some. Yeah, there, there's an important thing in this in this report that I gave you today. There's a chart that he gives, and he can only go by what's now. So he can't he can't tell if he can't give us exact. So he did he, we did add this, this little disclaimer on page three. If you look at page three, housing estimates in that text box on the right. As currently planned, Redmond and Cashline do not have any three-bedroom units. Yep. <clears throat> but COA rules require that they're three-bedroom units. The town won, or the builder won, some type of appeal to that, or I, know, I guess some type of a procedure where they asked for that to be waived when they did um, SC Lake. So that's why there's no three bedroom. But he, he did want he did want to make sure we knew that that even though at this particular time there are no three bedroom there, he feels like it's a good chance that it will. So I think like think about it. If you think about it even in simple terms right now, to house everybody we have now in, in regular space and, and in special services office, move to pre-K, all that, we would need we would need the equivalent of five classrooms. To expand, to expand to allow for one additional class in each grade, K five, we'd need an additional six. So we so what the proposal here now is to do kind of in the middle. Give us give us some room for growth, but I think your point is it's a great point actually. As long as what we build, if we do decide to do it, it gives us some room for growth, is also expandable to allow for one more section per grade. Because pretty much after that, both schools are maxed out. And you gotta start looking at an, an, another, another setup. You really can't have much more than, you know, you'd have one school now with maybe 650-ish, and you'd have another one around 500. That's about, that's about it. So you start looking for another alternative if, if these other projects start coming down the pipe. Yeah. But I think that's a great point. As a matter of fact, I put it on my notes. I did mention it to him, and I know he said, that, that anything we did would be expandable, but I'm just going to double check and send them an email and ask them to put that back in writing. Yeah, because that one that's on the back of a review, I had the question, I mean, yeah, it could be expanded, but which, you know, now you're talking right. about, yeah, is the expansion, how, how easy is that? And Steve, can you ask Ross Haber on, on page three, actually, since you pointed that out, on the Redmond Press, he's got total five, but then the, the numbers add up to six. Four, one, one is right after it. So you Total for Redmond Press, total students five. And it says four one one. Now, granted, the high school is not included with us, but if you look at the next number for, for instance, Ram, seventy nine is the equivalent of fifty five plus sixteen plus eight. I don't know if it should should it be six or five at that, that total students on Redmond Press. I'm not following. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, all right. Now I see total students. You see total five. Yeah, and it says four, four one one. one. Okay. The numbers don't add up. But the number down below add up, for instance, you know, for capture line, it's 14 plus 4 plus 2 equals 20. So I, I thought at first he excluded the high school because right. it's not a liberal house, but it doesn't seem like it may. Well, it's six it's supposed to be, yeah, it's right. either, six, either that K through 5 maybe is supposed to be 3 or the total is supposed to be 6. Okay. Not, it's not a huge difference, but. But yeah, I mean, the difference, obviously, if you add in those three bedrooms, that's really good to know that. I didn't realize that the co rules should normally require three bedrooms because there's a percentage that need to be three bedrooms, but but they were able to win some you know waivers to that. Because I mean that the, the difference, depending on how many three bedrooms you have, could be double the amount of people, the amount of students coming out. Because Castro is 65, Rams 118, less than half. And the amount of students is a quarter. Yeah. So it's a lot. Because there's three bedrooms in that RAM associated one. If any 
anybody has any other specific questions that they think of between now and July 12th, please get them to me prior to the meeting so I can have the answers right there. So if you're when you're perusing both documents and you're starting to think about your questions, just email them to me because we won't see each other again. And rather than having to come back to you with the answer, we should be able to make it a little work, like a working session where I can have answers for you. If if you if you don't, obviously I might I might take some time to get you an answer back. Yes. So I appreciate you forwarding your, the packet. The, this is exactly what I was trying to remember the what the state calls functional capacity and on that scale. Yeah, yes. Um, and so the one that you supplied is from 2005. We had half day kindergarten at the time. The student population was different in 2005. Is there a way to get like this modernized? Because I'm looking at what they gave you. Like it's not. Yeah. It's the same level of detail as this is. You know why? It's, it's, a, it's a state thing. Because they can't, in, they can't input the, they yeah. can't, what if that's the formula that the state gives out? I, I'm going to ask him if he can do it without that. But it can't, we can't get the official numbers like you have there because of the state has not uh, approved their new website where, the, where we go actually go and load it in. So we actually have to go on this website from 2005. We have to go back. It's, a, it's kind of tricky to do it. Well, I'm thinking more. just take credit from half day to full day. There's yeah. going to be well, changes. Yep. This isn't this isn't real real life. This, but this is what I, I think will tell you how many. Like you're telling us you need five, maybe six. This, this is the state's yep. version of how on how. Yep. I think the full day, and, and to your point, the usage has changed from that with the small class instruction. So if you follow their guidelines, and then that's how the funding formulas also go by these guidelines. Yep. So we, you can't even give yourself a fair shake if these aren't baseline. Right. That that's supposed to be done in September, which is a pain. Well, the thing is you want a decision before that, and I feel like this is a key. This is a key. You don't have a baseline. I don't know how you... This is needs to be done. Well, let me see if I can get him to give us like a draft of that. It won't That's be how they determine the money. It's a ranking thing. You know? and along the same lines as what Steve said, if, if anybody has any questions, particularly for the town, three of us are meeting them tomorrow, so feel free to reach out to me, Dino or Steve, tomorrow. Let us know before we meet with them. We'll put out some notes too. For the meeting, so everybody knows what we want. I guess my one question to them would be why, you know, they had that nice speaker that we were at, you know, like, did that ever get posted? Or? Oh, that thing that you sent them? I don't I know. I mean, no, I just think there could be a little more. I know that things are the litigation umbrella or the cloud, but they need, there is unrest out there, and I think it would make sense to sort of do a some sort of formal communique other than nothing. I'm just like, you You get it. You're like Twittering and Facebook. I mean, maybe not your, you know, I'm not su suggesting go Trump-ish or anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying like that, that presentation was public and it was meaningful and anybody who's interested could get something out of that. But they don't have a page. They really should create something to support, like the discussions we're having here, like depends who you talk to on the council. Why do vote for them? Like, like they're not gonna. It, it's it's clear, but it's going. You know, I mean, I think it would help to have an official communique. Is so, because it, you know, it's not clear. Maybe it won't be talked to the election. Executive. I move to convene an executive yeah. session in accordance with Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act. The purpose of this closed session will be to discuss personnel. Legal? Yes, you It's really just personnel. Just personnel? Just personnel. Minutes of this session will be made available to the public when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Second. 
All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? Me. No. You can't. Oh, yeah. Yes, he can't uh, vote against me, he just can't talk against me. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, no abstentions. All right. We are out as of 8.43 p.m.